Well, I think like Pastor Ben would say, is welcome to um, our online audience. And thank you for tuning in to Grace Community. Amen. Pastor Ben is absent today. He's dealing with some, uh, some sickness. But Father knows uh, what's best, and he is in charge. And we all pray to God that God, that uh, Pastor Ben would be all right really, really, really soon. We miss him here this morning. Well, I'm not going to keep you long, uh, but if you let me preach the way I know how to preach, then I won't be stumbling and fumbling over my words and things trying to be somebody else. Is, is that all right? If you have your Bible, that's what I'm talking about right there. Let's turn to the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 22, verse 1. Amen. First Samuel chapter 22 verse 1 and 2 matter of fact when you got it say I got it Amen First Samuel chapter 22 verse 1 And we're going to talk a little bit about David And we see here that um this scripture is, I would like to say, the beginning of a new start. The beginning of a new start. And my, my Bible, the NIV, says, David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. Verse 2 all those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. I would like to bring to your attention, David here was experiencing some restoration. Many of us are experiencing some, rest, some, some restoration in our lives when we go through things. But David's experience didn't start here. It started with back in chapter 15 when David had no idea about nothing that was going on in government. He was a shepherd boy. He was out minding his own business, shepherding sheep. But up in the federal government and around the religious realms, we had a prophet named Samuel. And we had a king named Saul. And the, uh, 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 a prophecy came to go uh, to war. Saul was out at war, and he was told to go to the Amalekites and wipe everything living out. Kill men, women, children, kill livestock, sheep. Everything, mothers, daughters, you name it. Those were the instructions. Now, meanwhile, David is back somewhere playing the harp, looking at sheep, looking at the skies that God has made, looking at how the grass is growing. But Saul, on the other hand, is at war. He uh, looked good. He was tall, handsome. He stood taller than most men, but he looked like a king. That's why he was elected in the first place, because uh, God put him there because the people wanted a king. Y'all still with me? Oh yeah. All right. Now, when Saul went to war, he won the battle. He won the battle. He did not uh, obey the instructions, though. How many of us know that it's, it's, that it's real important that we obey God's instructions? Amen. Amen. We can get ourselves in some trouble when we don't obey the instructions. I'm trying to walk through this thing. Now, bear with me. Saul killed everything ex except the king. 
he, he kept the best looking sheep that he thought was unblemished. He didn't kill the sheep. He didn't kill the king. Those were his instructions, but he didn't. In fact, I believe he wanted to keep the king to, 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 to brag, to say, look, now you have to follow my orders. I'm go you're going to make me be a king of kings. You are going to have to kneel to me. But guess what? God wasn't pleased. So when Sam got word of it, he, can I call him Sam? Sam. When Sam got word of it, he was disturbed in his spirit. Yeah. God sent him out to Saul to talk to him. Saul, what's going on? Saul is happy and he's gloating and he's feeling good about his accomplishments. David, on the other hand, has no idea any of this is going on. Oh. Minding his own business, being a young, good-looking boy, the son of Jesse yeah. out in the field. But Saul, on the other hand, is gloating and he's talking to uh, oh, Sam. Mm -hmm. well. Sam says, Saul, what's going on, man? Saul says, I did what you told me to do. I followed your instructions. Sam says, oh, really? <laughs> what is this noise about sheep and goats that I hear? You've been busted. You're caught in your lies. <laughs> Well, let me cut through, the, cut through the field a little bit because I'll be here a long time if I do that. <laughs> yep. So long story short about that story, Sam told Saul that God is going to remove his grace from you being king. Wow. Saul says, hold on, wait a minute, Sam. Uh, ask the Lord to forgive me. Pray with me. Let me be seen with you in front of the people to let them know that I am still ordained to be king. Saul said, no, bro, you messed up. Yep. So he begins to walk off. And Sam grabs the hem of, uh, Saul grabs the hem of Saul's garment, snatches it and tears it. Sam turns around and said, the same way that you tore my, my garment, the kingship, of Israel is torn away from you. Wow. In the same spirit, it was then that Saul began to lose his mind. Yeah. It was then that Saul had a seed planted in the spirit of, 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 of pain and fear and anxiety because he knew then that God's spirit was not with him, uh -oh. not to be king. Meanwhile, Saul is going through his, his turmoil. Sam was going through turmoil. I want to make a point here. Sam was going through a turmoil, weeping over Saul. And the next morning, God says to Sam, how long are you going to weep and fret? and be bothered about this matter concerning Saul. My point to you is, when God snatches something away from you that we wanted to hold on to, why? Why, Sanders? Why do you hold on to something that God has already let go? Have you ever been there? Have you ever... Have you ever held on to something that you wanted so dearly, but God has taken his grace from it? God has taken his favor from it, and you're still trying to hold on to it? God has spoken to your spirit. Sanders, let it go. Let me tell you something. When you're in love with something like that, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. So God told Sam, get up, go see Jesse. Jesse got some boys down there, and I'm going to show you which one to pick. Jesse let all his boys come parade before 
Sam. Them good looking, mature looking men, strong looking men. They come through there one by one. Sam's like, nope, not him. Nope, not him. Nope, not him. And he got to the last one that wasn't there. He says, Jesse, these are all your boys. I said, no, I got another one. He's out there in the field, minding his own business, shepherding sheep. Now, let me tell you something. When God got a call on your life, when God called you to do something, it's been my experience, brother. It's been my experience, Rose, that when he called you to do something, God got a plan to take you through something. It doesn't matter what your previous experiences may have been. Doesn't matter what your financial status may be. Doesn't matter what your race may be. Doesn't matter what your age may be. Does not matter what your physical appearance look like. It doesn't matter when God has a call on your life. When he got something for you to do. He got something for you to go through. He's going to train you. Saul had begun to lose his mind. The spirit of jealousy and, and, and fear had set in on him. He started having fits of rage. One of his servants says to him, uh, King, you all right? You twitching? You blinking? You having fits? Why you going off on folks? We ain't nobody done nothing to you. You need some music. But I heard, I heard him say, it's in the scripture. I would say it written just like that, but I'm in church. I heard one of the servants say, look here, man. I know where a skilled musician is. He's smooth, just like Jason. He good. When he started having fits, let him play. Let the spirit of the Lord, let the, let the anointing of that musician flow through your heart and calm your nerves. And it happened just like that. He sent for David. David came from the fields to be presented to walk in, in front of the king. How do you leave the field shepherding sheep to be interviewed for the main band stage in the White House? God has a call on your life. Doesn't matter where you come from. When God needs you to do something as a disciple of Christ, he will call you. Oh, I'm in the house. Oh, I'm preaching to me now. When he needs you to do something, he'll call you, get your attention, present you, and send you back. And when God's time is ready, he'll call you again. Saul had another fit. David showed up. Jamming. Doing his thing. I went to see him, y'all. Yeah. I went to see old Jason. Boy, Jason, Jason was doing his thing. I liked him. I'm telling you, David showed up in Saul's chambers, played that liar, that liar, the leer liar, however you want to pronounce it. It looks like a harp. A little lap, lap-sized harp, and he's, he's playing that common music. Saul says, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm coming down here now. Send one of his servants back to Jesse, Mm -hmm. David's daddy, and says, I need your boy. Mm -hmm. I I need your boy. My heart ain't right. My my, my, my spirit is confused. I got some issues on my mind. 
He's still thinking about the conversation that Sam told him on the hill. Yeah. Right. He's still thinking about uh, 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 when Sam told him that obedience was better than sacrifice. He's still feeling guilty about the disobedience and not doing the things that God said to do. So he's feeling guilty. And God has fixed it. God has fixed it. I, I got to sit right there for a minute. Nobody else was able to do it. God fixed it and started a transition in our in between these two men, these three men, and in this land from a federal government to a sheep herder to a prophet. God arranged this. God coordinated this. Have you ever seen anything in your life have you ever been blessed from somebody or somehow and you had no idea that you would be blessed the way you were blessed? That you would find yourself in a situation that you had no idea that it would even happen? From people would bless you that you didn't even know. Have you ever been there? Well, here you got Sam, and you got David, and you got Saul, and you got Jesse. Listen to how God is starting to anoint David to be set up to be king. Y'all know David, don't you? You know David, right? King. You know David, adulterer. Yeah. You know David, conspirer to murderer. Yeah. You know David, yeah. general. Yeah. You know David. Oh, yeah. But before he got there, he was just a shepherd boy. Yeah. Minding his own business. Yeah. But when he got to this place, God was working things out in his life. Oh, yeah. To move Saul out and to move David in. Right. Look at how he set him up. Saul calls Jesse. I want your boy to come out to field and come live with me. I need him here. So David still was running back and forth from the palace to the field, from the palace to the field, from the palace to the field. Every time he go back to the palace, Saul was having one of those fits. He had to go back to the field because he had a responsibility of sheeping, uh, of shepherding the sheep. So when he goes back to the palace, man, I can just see him now. Man, this dude gone crazy again. Man, I'm about sick of this right here. But David now has been anointed. He's got a different. The Bible says from that, from this point forth, David was, let me say it like this. He was infused with the spirit of God. He, the, the spirit of God had started to, to, to pack his heart. So every time he needed to go see Saul, he did it with the spirit of the Lord in his heart. He did it with an anointing in his fingers. And he was going back and forth, back and forth. I know a situation right now. Well, a friend of mine gets sick, and it doesn't matter what time of the day or night. He'll call me. Are you available? I said, yeah, I'm available. I go over. He's a 77-year-old man, and his legs don't work so good. And so when he calls me, I may be on the job. I may be painting. I may be working on somebody's plumbing. I may be on a ladder. It doesn't matter. I drop what I'm doing, and I rush over to him. One time I was coming in from out of town. I was on the other side of Jackson, Tennessee. He called me, man, I'm on my way. I get there, he's laying on the floor, sometime in his own feces, sometime in his own urine. He's been there for some hours. So it doesn't matter what I've got on, doesn't matter if I've been at work all day, just got out of the shower, doesn't matter. I have to go and wrap my arms around this man. 
tell him to hug me around my neck yeah. and I have to pick him up, yeah. squat him, and I can only get about this far because he's not big as I am, but he's about 250 pounds. Yeah. And I have to put his back and his bottom on a stool just to get him off the floor. Right. And then I have his wife to lift his legs up so we can scoot him all the way up. But while all I'm saying is sometimes when God calls you to do something, you go. I told him, if you don't want me to come, don't call me. So every time Saul needed David, he got up and he went. That was his job. It doesn't matter what time of day, what time of night. He went. Have you ever been a servant like that? Huh? Have you ever needed a servant like that? What would your wife do if, she, if you wasn't her gift? What would you do if she wasn't your gift? You ever been a caregiver? What would your patient do if you weren't their gift? If you wasn't there to take care of them? Have you ever witnessed anybody getting sick? What would they have done if you wasn't there to call 911? I got to get through this. I got to get through this. That touched my heart because that's a true story. So David goes to see Saul play the harp, help him with his, his issues that's going on. And then once he gets there, war breaks out against the, you can call it Philistines or the Philistines. War breaks out. You heard of Goliath, haven't you? Goliath, Goliath stood about 10 feet tall. He was a massive man. Strong man. His sword weighed over 100 pounds. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor. Uh, this, that's, that's my M.O. right there, but I sweat. Uh, I'm telling you. Goliath was a massive, impressive warrior. Been in the army all of his life. So he's standing there looking impressive. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. <laughs> And he talking bad about God's army. You punks. You a bunch of weaklings. Any one of you come out here and fight me, I'll make a deal with you. If you beat me and kill me, my whole army will serve you. If I beat you, <clears throat> your army will serve us. This went on for 40 days. Every day, Goliath would come up talking smack. Wake him up in the morning. They on one side of the hill, there's a valley. The other army on the other side. He was talking smack day and night, twice a day. David was talking to his father, Jesse. Jesse had gotten nervous because his three boys was out there in the army. Man, I got to get past this. God, I got to get past this. So Jesse says he got to find out what's going on because, you know, they didn't have the internet back then. You know, right? They didn't have the internet. They didn't have cell phones, you know, none of that kind of stuff. So they had to run messengers. So Jesse got a little care package and told David, he said, look, take this to the general and take this to your brothers and find out what's going on because not knowing, worrying about my children is about to do some things to me. Anybody got children? Yeah. Don't them cheer and stress you? Yeah. Man! God Almighty! Yeah. Them children 
put you through some things, man. My son left Memphis. I told him, I said, man, don't make me worry about you. Guess what he did? Word the snot out of me. Good God Almighty. Lord have mercy. That boy gave me the natural blues. Mm. Still worrying me. But 34 years old. So he sends this care package by David. So David now has got this, and he's, Goliath is out there doing his thing, standing up there, you bunch of punks, and nobody going to come out here and say nothing to me. So David just set the bag down, and he went over, and he, what did he say? What, what? And then he asking some of the soldiers, he said, what's going on? And Goliath is over there doing his thing. None of y'all going to come out here. What you going to do? David said, what? Ain't none of y'all going out there? None? So his conversation was overheard, and he ended up in the face of Saul again. I'm just trying to show you how it went down, how God coordinated this thing. Because, see, David now, not only is he a skilled musician, David got some courage. David's been faced with bears. David has been faced with lions and, and, and a stick. You know, David's been out there looking at the glory of God and knowing that there is a God who is almighty. David knew something about God. David knew something about loving because he loved his sheep. So he in the face of Saul now, and Saul is having this conversation with him. You just a boy. You, you're not a soldier. You, you, you can't go out here and be, uh, beat this man. What makes you think that? And so David started telling him about his resume. Right. Come on now. Well, I'm out there with my sheep. If a lion comes, I leave my sheep. Y'all remember that parable. I leave the 99 and go out to the one. I leave the sheep and I go get the lion snatch the sheep out of his mouth, deny a lion of his meal that day. And if the lion attacks me, I grab him by the hair and I kill him. It's in the book. It's in the book. Come on, talk to me. It says in the book, Reverend. It's in the book. So David is standing up in front of a king telling him, look, all the rest of them punks won't go, but I'll go. I ain't scared. (laughs) (laughs) I've been in some positions in my life that I'd be scared to death. I'd be like, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but let me talk a little bit. (laughs) Talking is what I do. So Saul sets him up, give him sword, give him shield, give him armor. <laughs> David put that stuff on. He said, man, this stuff heavy. I can't move in it. <laughs> he took that stuff off, and he went and got his own gear. He went out to the creek. Come on, say creek. He went out to the creek and got him five smooth stones. He put them in his satchel. And he got his slingshot. You know what a slingshot is? It's a, it's a long strap of leather with a pouch in it. Yeah, come on. So he went out there and he standing up there looking like, so you were supposed to be so bad, huh? Mr. Goliath. Yeah. And Goliath talking bad to him. But you just, okay. <laughs> this is how we're going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you for granted. And then David says this. You have insulted my God. That's a bad thing to do. If you are a child of God, you should not stand for letting somebody insult your God. God is real. God loves you too much. God cares for you too much. God carries you every day. He provides for you every day. God loves you. 
your family, your friend. He loves all of us. God has taken us places that we couldn't imagine that we would go. Amen. So David is standing up there looking at this massive man. Goliath is making his way towards David. David reaches in the pouch, feels the slingshot. Come on, Goliath, get in range. Just a little bit close. Hit that boy in the forehead. The Bible said the stone sank in his head. Knocked that boy down, went over, cut his head off. Clap your hands. Don't tell me God won't feel your heart, feel your spirit to where you can conquer your Goliath. There's been some giants in your life, but you needed the spirit of God to address. There are some things that you couldn't do on your own, but God let you do it. I got to cut through the field here right now. Because of that battle right there, it got the attention of the army. It got the attention of the people of Israel. It got the attention of Saul himself. Saul asked the question, who boy is that? His servants, his, his servants said, I don't know. So when, so when, when, when David got there with this, this man, he got to be a big head. You know that man, that big, you know, 10 feet tall, that got to be a big old head. So he got there holding this, this boy's head, talking about here's, here's your victory. Saul says, who are you? He said, I'm Jesse, the, 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 your servant, the son of Bethlehem. I want y'all to remember that. The son of Bethlehem. Remember that. That's going to be important. So from that point, Saul really wanted David to be with him all the time. Keep in mind, Saul still got some turmoil going in his head, but he, he has nowhere to place this anguish. He has nowhere to put it. It's just in his head. It's just in his, in his mind. He has nowhere to put it. So a couple of more battles went on, and David, every time he go to battle, he coming back. Yeah, we did it again, and we did it more impressive this time. And then the people in the land of Saul's kingdom start singing, start singing, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his ten thousands. Right there is where Saul had somewhere to put that pain. Jealousy start to develop in his heart. Envy start to develop in his heart. He started to get mad. Oh, now they singing to David. What else for him to take besides the kingdom? Let me tell you something, how God set things up. When David got to Saul's house, Saul had a son named Jonathan. Jonathan took to, took to, to David like fish and water. When he got there, he gave him his, his robe. Y'all compare, don't, don't let this go over your head now. He gave him his robe. He started giving him royal things that belonged to himself. Now, Saul had already said, there's nothing else to take but the kingdom. Right. He'd already been anointed to be the next king. Y'all follow me? Now, he's, God is starting to set up the protocol. I want you to pay attention. When John started giving David royal things, he started setting him up to be adopted son. When Saul moved him in the house, Saul set him up to be an adopted son. Now, he's an adopted brother of John. He's an adopted son of Saul, and he has royal authority, and he has some ability, some, some, what's the word I'm looking for? He has some accountability in the kingdom. He has some responsibility because he goes out and he wins wars, battles. You see how he's been set up? When God has something for you to do, when he calls you to do something, he takes you through something. He will start setting you up. Have you been paying attention to the steps? He starts you out nice and easy. Starts you out in the field shepherding sheep. Then he moves you from the field to the palace. Then he moves you from the palace 
to the battlefield. Then he moved you from the battlefield to some authority in the house. But listen, Saul now has somewhere to put that anger. He started, the Bible says that Saul started focusing on David. His attention was focused on David. Wasn't focused on running the country. Wasn't focused on administrative duties. His attention was focused on David. Am I in here? Yeah. You don't want that kind of authority focused on you, and you hadn't done anything wrong. So now Saul is having, check this out. Saul had another one of those fits, and David go to see about him. The music wasn't working. I can see Saul pacing, playing that harp. Why don't you stop all that noise? You know, it used to work. It ain't working no more. He picks up a javelin. Yeah! Now, you know David's not that far from him, right? Throws a javelin right at David. Try, the Bible says try to pin him to the wall. It's in the book. Saul tried to pin David to the wall with a javelin, trying to kill him. Saul, mad, angry, chased him around the room. David runs out, never to go back there to play the harp again. Got to cut across the field some more. David and Jonathan have a meeting. Man, your dad trying to kill me. <laughs> For what? That ain't right. That ain't true. Well, let's investigate. Let's figure it out. Long story short, they found out that Saul was trying to kill David. Unjustified. For no reason. Anything ever happened to you and you can't figure out why it's happening to you? You're minding your own business and it seems like the bottom falls out. Things start to go wrong in your life. Now you're on the run. You're scrambling, trying to raise money to pay this. Car go bad. Health go bad. Your, your, your savings starting to deplete. Your friends starting to leave you. You're trying to figure out, what's going on? What did I do? What, why is this happening to me? All I did was what I was asked to do. I did it well. Is that the problem? Listen. Scripture tells you, don't get tired in well-doing. If you're doing what's right, always be found doing right. I learned that lesson. It took me a long time to learn it, and it didn't come easy. So now Saul, it's been confirmed that Saul is trying to kill David. I'm getting to another point. Then I'm going to close this up. Sweat making me knock my mic off. <laughs> David goes on the run. Jonathan and David come up with a scheme to find out, you know, a little communication uh, from an arrow, you know. They got their own thing, their own communication working. Mm -hmm. So he finds out that Saul is, in fact, trying to kill him. So David is on the run. Let me listen. Listen to the pain here. He meets with John and they have to say their goodbyes. They are best of friends now. They're like brothers. And he's not sure if he's going to ever see him again. Now, it's one thing when, let's say, if you're working on a start to a new beginning. But we're talking about a beginning to a new start. Right. It's one thing if a woman has been pregnant for nine months. You can plan for the baby, buy pampers and bottle liners and 
onesies. And the pregnancy come to an end when you have the baby. You can celebrate. It's one thing when you go through a graduation. You've been working in college four years, two years. You working hard to study and you can see your goal. But your student tenure ends at graduation. You can celebrate. It's one thing when you are engaged to a woman. She's beautiful. You, every day you'd want to see her and date her and court her. and You know, you're proud of the ring you gave her. But engagement come to an end when you stand at the altar and you say, I do. You can celebrate those. But when you're going through something hard, and it's challenging your life. It's challenging your well-being. It's challenging your health. It's challenging the way you see things. It's challenging the way you get along with family. And you have to let somebody go. And it feels like it's pulling your heart out. The Bible says that David wept, that he cried harder. I mean, he cried when he had to say goodbye to his brother. It was a hard thing, a hard thing to let him go. And then he went. Bible didn't say he was on a horse or anything like that, but he was running for his, for his life. He was a fugitive from the federal government. Yeah, come on now. And I can see him walking through the backwoods from village to village because now there's a price on his head. David is in a bad place. He's by himself. He's lonely. He's probably got one bag. He has no food. So he ends up in the face of a priest. At Nod, after he's gone through village to village to village, watching his back, trying to sleep when he can. Let me tell you something. When God got a call on your life to do something, you can just about be a certain that God is going to take you through something. So he meets up with this priest. And when the priest sees him, he's terrified because he knows who David is. He says, why are you alone? I'm getting here. I'm going somewhere with this. Why are you alone? David tells a lie. The king sent me on a private mission. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Now, here, listen to this right here. You got any food? Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you, you got any weapons around here? Yeah. Guess what? The place... Not of all places, the weapon that he got happens to be Goliath's sword. So he's in a hostile land. He's alone. He's brokenhearted. He's hungry. He's confused. He don't know why this is happening to him. But this thing that he's dealing with is real. Yeah. He has no idea. The pressure is backing in on him. Somebody snitched on him. I know what David is. Saul sent me in out there. Talk to him. Not Saul, but another king in the land of Goli where Goliath was. I know this man. So they arrested David. <laughs> I've been here. I've been here where the pressure has gotten so hard, where you've been through so much pain. You had no options. 
Your friends were gone. Your money's gone. Your car broke down. You lost your job. You got the bad health report. You're in trouble. You have no idea what's going to happen next. David found himself arrested with the expectations of being murdered, killed. The Bible says David pretended to lose his mind. Wow. Says he started slobbering all over himself. He started scratching and jerking and twitching, doing things to make the king think that he was a madman. Let me ask you something. Have you ever found yourself under so much pressure that you find yourself acting out of character? Huh? Yeah. yeah, I know. I know just like David had a pretty good start. He had a pretty good start. But things got rough on him. Stress set in on him. Depression set in on him. Hurt and pain set in on him. Circumstances start setting in on him. I'm talking about me now. Yeah, I'm a pretty good dude, but I found myself in a place where I started to use some language that I'm not supposed to use as a preacher. I found myself in some situations where I do some things that I'm not supposed to do as a preacher. I'm acting. Yeah, that's character. When you start acting in ways that you know that you're not supposed to act. When you start saying things and going places that you know that's not in your character, you're acting. Come on and say it. Come on. Out of character. Amen. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Yeah, yeah you've been there. Yeah. You've done it. You smoked some things you're not supposed to smoke. Uh -huh. You've been some places you're not supposed to go. Yeah. You said some things you're not supposed to say. Under pressure. I ain't talking about that recreational stuff. <laughs> I'm talking about you find yourself doing some things that you never thought you would do. And you're acting out of character. But look at God. Look at God. God let a man who's acting completely out of character go. This is when we get to our verse. David left up out of there, booking it, and he runs to a cave. Yep. When they find out that Dave is still alive in a cave, you read the scripture. Yeah. People started to come to him like angels, mm -hmm. people who were disgusted, people who were frustrated people who were tired of what was going on. He had a cave full of ragtag uh, people who didn't pay their taxes. Right. He had a following of people who would do anything for, to, for survival. Yeah. And they made Dave their commander. Right. Sanders, why you tell me that long story? Because the beginning of a new start often starts when you have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. When you get to your new start, when you get to your restoration, you have been trained, you have been tried, you have been proven to be faithful. God has showed you that he's merciful, mm -hmm. faithful, yep. he's true. Yeah, yeah. He's proven that he'll never, thank you, God. Amen. He's proven that he will never leave you. Amen. When he restores your heart, he fills your heart with so much love. He fills your heart with so much power. Amen. He fills your heart with so much understanding. Amen. You've gone through so much, it erases all doubt. It erases all judgment from somebody else. You can look at somebody else and say, you're my brother. Yeah. 
You my brother, you my sister. It doesn't matter where you come from, you're my sister. I love you, you my sister, you my brother. Because I got a different sight. My heart is changed. I've been tried now. When he God, when God got something for you to do, he got something for you to go through. We know what David ended up doing. When he left that cave, God had a purpose for his life. Go out of here. Not just go be king and lead the people, but go out here and get married. Go out here and have children. Go out here and be a godly man. Be somebody that the people can respect. And always, always trust God under any circumstance. I think I better quit there. At this point, the way we do it, the way I'm used to do it, is we would open the doors of the church. We would call this the ministry of evangelism. If there's a new member, a new person in the audience that would want to come and be a part of God's kingdom, this would be their time. If there's something you wanted to renew in your heart, this would be that time. And if nobody showed, then this would be the time for an altar call. Okay. Everybody online, thank you for joining us. Hope something was said that would minister to your heart. Thank you all so much.